Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the great Jerome Kern musical success, Sally, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest star, Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another memorable musical hit is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, tonight we're looking for a silver lining, and we all expect to find it in Jerome Kern's great music for Sally. The Sally of our alley is charming Lucille Norman. Don't be surprised if I fall in love with her in the next 30 minutes. I am Blair Farquhar, a poor, unfortunate guy with only a couple of million bucks in the bank. But as the curtain rises, we meet the Grand Duke Constantine in the little country of Czechogovinia. Constantine, Grand Duke of Czechoslovakia. That is me. Revolution. We have found out about you and Madame Nukarova. No. What did you find out? That you bought her a diamond necklace with the taxpayer's money. Oh, is that all? For a minute, I thought it was going to be a scandal. <laughs> you are deposed. You are now a fugitive, an exile. A bum. <laughs> Of course, I didn't know anything about Balkan revolutions in those days. And when I dropped into the alley restaurant in New York for a bite of lunch, I didn't have any idea that the man who was waiting on me had once been the Grand Duke of Czechoslovakia. Waiter. Oh, waiter. Yes, sir. Would you please clear off these dishes and bring me some food? Clear off the dishes. All right. Oh, well, what are you doing? If I don't smash them, I'll have to wash them. And I hate that. You know, they hired a dishwasher, but she didn't come here yet. Oh, I see. Well, uh, bring me your number three special. Number three, yes, sir. Right away. Number three. What a restaurant. Hello. Well, hello. Are you the proprietor? Oh, no. No, I'm just a poor, unfortunate customer. But, uh, won't you sit down and have lunch with me? Oh, no. I can't. Why not? Don't you eat? Oh, sure. But... I'm just the dishwasher. Isn't that awful? Oh. <laughs> well, don't worry. Things are bound to look up. You know, there's a, a bright side to everything. Even the dishpan? Why, sure. Please don't be offended if I preach to you a while. Tears are out of place in eyes that were meant to smile. There's a way to make your very biggest trouble small. It all look for the silk lining when air a cloud appears in the blue. Remember, somewhere the sun is shining, and so there are. Please. 
I hope you're right. Tell me, what's your name? Sally. My name's Blair Farquhar. <laughs> Isn't that a mouthful? <laughs> I like it. And I'm going to remember what you told me. As I wash my dishes, I'll be following your plan. Till I see the brightness in every pot and pan. I am sure your point of view will ease the daily grind. So I'll keep repeating in my mind. Good luck, Sally. Here's your lunch, sir. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, waiter. Uh, excuse me, if you please. Uh, are you Mr. Farquhar, the well-to-do millionaire? No, no, he's my father. Oh. I say, I understand he's giving a party tonight in honor of the Grand Duke of Czechoslovakia. Are you going to be there? No, not if I can help it. I understand the Duke is a stupid bore. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, uh, would you wish your dessert now? No, thanks. I don't care for any dessert. You are lucky. <laughs> you know, in all that high society at the party tonight, there won't be one girl as pretty as your new dishwasher. Oh, uh -huh. I didn't notice. Is she beautiful? Beautiful? Why, she's Juliet, Cinderella, all mixed in one. Imagine, right here in the alley restaurant, too. Say, you sound like you're falling in love with her. Well, maybe I am. She's somehow different from the rest I can't describe her quite She seems to me just right She won my heart at sight It matters not how she is dressed I want to hold her tight She is the darling of my heart And I met her in And on some future day To her I mean to say Dear little girl, I love you Dear little girl For the dress that you wear is a poor affair You made me care and I know someday that I mean to tell her All of my golden schemes We shall find a world of happiness Where the sun ever gleams And then I'll take my Sally
I can see the headlines. Millionaire falls in love with dishwasher. You think maybe I've got some soap in my eye, huh? So you are the new dishwasher, huh? Yes. Let me look at you. Well? You are not pretty. You're beautiful. Oh, thank you. You're cute, too. <laughs> What's your name? Konstantin Alexandrovich Fedor Gregorovich. What is yours? Sally. You got shortchanged? <laughs> Sally, do you want I should help you with the dishes? Don't you hate it? Yes, but I want to make myself suffer. You've got yourself a job, mister. Konstantin the Tower. We are deeply honored. With you helping out, be through twice as fast. Even faster if I break a few. Gee, I wonder if I'll ever see him again. Oh, Sally. Blair Farquhar. Oh, I'm going to a party at his mansion tonight. Really? Yes. Honey, listen, I let you in on a little secret. You see, I am actually the Grand Duke of Czechoslovakia. You are? <laughs> Gee, I wish I could go to that party. Then I'd get to see Blair again. I got it. What have you got? Sally, I am going to take you to that party as Madame Nukorova. Madame who? A, a, a famous singer, you know, the, the Czecho... Uh, Czechoslovenian Nightingale. Well, what if she finds out? Yeah, she's back in Czechoslovenia. She'll never know. Gee, I'll put my hair up on top of my head and wear false eyelashes. All you have to do is be as beautiful as you are. Of course, I'm taking an awful chance, but if they find out that you're a dishwasher... What if they find out you're a waiter? Yeah, you say you got a point, you know. <laughs> All right, it's a deal. We go to the party together. The Duke and the Duchess of Dishpan. Oh, Connie, you're an angel. Oh, that's right. oh, just wait and see. I'll get out of those soap suds yet. for the second act of Sally in just a moment. That familiar old song symbolizes the work of about one and a quarter million men and women employed by the nation's railroads. But that's not all. That's right. Although I don't work directly on the railroads, I'm one of more than a million people who help produce the fuel, materials, and supplies that keep the railroads running. And don't forget me. I'm one of the millions of people who directly or indirectly have invested part of my savings in the railroads. Well, I feel almost as though I've been working on the railroad, too. For I'm one of more than a million people whose hobby is railroading. Yes, at heart, just about everybody is a railroad man. And the railroads, basically, are everybody's business. They're your business, for example, yours and mine. Because without railroad freight trains, you and I could not live as we do. For only the railroads, with their tremendous capacity and high efficiency, can provide the high-volume, low-cost transportation needed for the mass production and distribution of most everything we eat, wear, and use. The railroads, in fact, move more tons of freight, more miles, than all the other forms of transportation combined. What's more, they do this job over their own steel highways, which don't cost you, the taxpayer, a single penny. Yes, the railroads are everybody's business. That's why it's important to you that they are continuing to spend right up to the limit of available money and materials in order to keep on improving their service, a service which is essential to your welfare and to the commerce and defense of our country. Here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Jerome Kern's Sally, starring Gordon McRae as Blair Farquhar 
and Lucille Norman as Sally, with Denny Rubin as the Grand Duke. That night we had a party at our Fifth Avenue mansion in honor of the Grand Duke of Czechoslovakia. And when the famous singer Madame Nukorova walked in, she could have knocked me over with a Balkan dukedom because she was a dead ringer for my little dishwasher, <laughs> Sally. <laughs> Monsieur Farquhar, bonsoir, bonsoir, bonsoir. Um, bonsoir, Madame Dukarova. One thing astonishes me. Both you and the Duke, well, you look very familiar to me. Perhaps we met in Europe, yes? Yeah? When I was overthrowing our kingdom. <laughs> Is it true, Madame, that you are the woman who caused 11 Balkan revolutions? 12? But who's counting? <laughs> it's amazing. Amazing. Such a beautiful girl and yet such a firebrand. You'll pardon our intrusion, our confusion is sublime. We've never seen a girl at all like you. I must admit I'm rather unconventional. A type that must appear as open new. Your life is splendid flower, not from our domestic mind. An orchid that can thrill us with delight. At last I'm not a blossom so rich. burning flame. We know your name. You do? Well, all the same. I'm just a wild rose, not a prim and mild rose. Take me if you can. I'm a rose to suit any man. Some passion Madam Nukarova, would you come and walk with me in the garden? There's something I want to tell you. Mr. Farquhar, I shall be delighted to see your garden. It's astonishing how much you look like a friend of mine. Uh, a dishwasher. Ah, this little dishwasher. She is nice. Well, I think you're prettier. It is the moonlight. That lovely bird. That's a whippoorwill. There's a nest of them in the willows. You know, I wish I were a whippoorwill. When I was a little girl, I used to listen to the whippoorwill and dream of living in a garden like this. Whippoorwill. I used to love to hear. Can 
to hear you call to me. I know she meant the world and all to me. When the sun had gone to rest, I could hear you from your nest. With will, you used to be so tenderly. Branches of the trees above, you would sing your plaintive little melodies of love. Now though you're no longer near, in my dreams I still can hear. What's going on inside? <laughs> Silence! Silence! My Highness will not endure this humiliation. His Highness! <laughs> Here's a tip, Your Highness. <laughs> Tommy, what's wrong? What's happened? Oh, Sally, they found out about me. He's no Grand Duke. He's nothing but a waiter in an alley restaurant. I have to do something to keep my Highness from getting hungry. <laughs> You should be ashamed of yourself. But, Madame Nukarova. I'm not Madame Nukarova. I'm just a dishwasher. Sally. As long as you thought we were fancy pants foreigners, you were nice to us. But you laugh as soon as you find out we have to work for a living. But, Sally, we didn't mean that. We... You think we're phonies. Well, I think you're a lot bigger phonies than we are. Come on, Connie. Let's go back to the soap sud. <laughs> Well, when Sally and the Duke marched out of our party that night, I figured I'd never see her again. But I figured wrong. For beauty and talent like Sally's couldn't hide forever behind a stack of dirty dishes. One of the biggest producers on Broadway discovered her and put her in a musical. And behind those footlights, Sally really found her silver lining. <laughs> Congratulations, Sally. It was a great show. Was I all right, Your Highness? All right. You're a big star, Sally. You've got them right in the bottom of your dishpan. I should be happy, but he didn't come. Blair? Yes. But after the party, you, you said you never wanted to look on him again. Oh, Your Highness, when a girl says that, she wants to see him twice as much. Okay, Sally. You wait here in your dressing room. I'll find that guy if I have to scour New York, if I have to scour the United States, if I have to scour the world. I... Hello, Sally. Quick scouring job. Hello. <laughs> Congratulations. I think everybody in the theater loved you almost as much as I do. You're sure you wouldn't love me more if I were a notorious woman who starts a revolution every Wednesday? Oh, Sally. It's you I love. Will you marry me? No. Well, why not? Well, that's what every girl's supposed to say the first time she's asked. What do they say the second time? Why don't you try it and see? All right. Will you marry me, Sally? Maybe. What happens the third time? Well, don't stop now. Try it and find out. Oh, Sally, will you, will you marry me? Of course I will. Oh, wonderful. I'll promise you one thing. What's that, Blair? Well, after we're married, I'll, I'll always help you do the dishes. <laughs> Silver lining Whenever a cloud appears in the blue Remember somewhere the sun is shining And so the right thing to do Is make it shine for you A heart full of joy Oh, 
you, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely Lucille Norman will be back in just a moment. And our good thanks to Benny Rubin and our entire company. Sally, with music by Jerome Kern and booking lyrics by Guy Bolton and Clifford Gray, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? You know, one of the quickest and best ways to tell how the nation's business is doing is to look over the latest report on freight car loadings. That's because the railroads carry the vast bulk of America's freight and accurately reflect the production of our farms and factories. Indeed, our mighty production system could not function without the railroads to provide the tremendous quantity of transportation needed for commerce and defense. That's why the railroads are truly everybody's business, yours and mine, because we could not possibly live as we do without their essential services. Thank you, Marvin. And now here again is the lovely Sally of our alley, Lucille Norman. Thank you, Gordon. I loved every minute of it, including every dish I had to wash. Say, Luce, can you imagine what an electric dishwasher would do to this story? <laughs> well, what's on the show train next week, Gordon? Well, you just give a listen. Recognize it? Mm, one of my favorites, Gordon. Gypsy Sweetheart. That's right, Lucy. From Victor Herbert's Enchanting Fortune Teller. And I'm turning my palm over to Dorothy Warren Show. She tells me there's a fortune in it. We'll all be listening next Monday night. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Lucy. As usual, you were wonderful. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though ready to pull out. And so, until next Monday night, and Victor Herbert's fortune teller, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying good night. <laughs> Sally was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae may soon be seen co-starring in By the Light of the Silvery Moon. Our choir was under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Jerome Hines on NBC.